Something so rare is about to occur that it only happens once every blue moon. Welcome, Supreme Commanders! I'm sure some of you are wondering, what is he talking about? Blue moon. Since when is there a blue moon on Supreme Commander Forge Lines? Well, right now. It's taking place on the map of Jewel Gap, and I know some of you are Jewel Gap Adaptive. There's going to be some people rolling their eyes thinking, no, not Jewel Gap, no, no. But listen, 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 listen. There's a blue moon over the map of Jewel Gap, and that only takes place when two extremely rare things take place. I'll talk you into those while we continue with the intro here. Those extremely rare events are number one that somehow, by some mysterious celestial kind of bodily event, there happens to be a good game take place on this map. And I know some people say, what do you mean, good game? They're all good games. Well, not always. <laughs> not always. And number two, the second celestial body swings on round the first and turns this really good game into an epic. And I know that some of you are thinking, now this never, ever happens on Dual Gap. Well, it does. And it causes it a blue moon, and that's happened right now. Yeah, so let's jump on in. Also, a huge thanks to Philip Crofts for allowing us to use his music. So today, slightly different music. If you are interested, it is found in the mod vault, the UI mod. And yeah, Philip Crofts very kindly given us permission to use it for the streams. If you do want any further information on that, do just check halfway down the description and yeah, check him out on his SoundCloud if you like it. And so with all of that said and done, let's unpause the game. Let's make this little thing disappear. We'll slow down time just a tad because we've got 12 players to introduce. But what I will say on this one, again, very closely managed or matched teams. We've got 1067 on team one versus 1083 on team two so these guys over in the eastern corner at least on paper enjoying roughly 16 or so point lead over their opponents a um, couple of minor changes on the map as well we've got the uh, uh total hit hit points here and cost if we do select on any units i'm sure you'll notice that's different and another very big fan of this found a little mod in the ui vault that allows us to reduce the thickness of the board around the minimap is a very minor change, but it actually makes uh, gives us a little bit more real estate on the screen. So big fan of that. I may just move it down a tad just so we get a little gap here. All right, then. So with all of that said and done, uh, let's start introducing our players. I think this time uh, we'll just go off the top from team one. And so starting over here on the left side uh, is Bookstar. Bookstar 88 to give him his full name. He's going Aeon First Land, and he is a 1,000 rated player there in the Lilac. Uh, moving to his south in the pink over here, it's the <laughs> OG. I assume original gangster, but of course could be wrong. I'm not about to tab out, tab out right now and double check. Either way, he's Snowy. He's an 1,100 rated and our second Aeon of the day. Also going First Land, and then moving a little further to his southeast over here. Our first UEF. It's green. I'm going to go with George. It's uh, with a J. I assume it's George and not George, but you know, who knows with my pronunciation. Could be anything. Either way, it's green George 2. He's playing as... I could pass off as green. It's the Scion as UEF there going first. And he's the 800 rated player. So a little below the average for this one. Moving to the southern side of the river divide there. Still on team one over here is what the Hawk, another Aeon player. This guy in white, 1100 rated, going first air. And so the first player to switch things up a little bit. Very close to the Hydro and is almost for sure going to enjoy a full adjacency bonus with that. Uh, moving further on to his south then in purple. I'm just going to... YNG crayons. I mean, we're just going to go with crayons for this guy. In deep purple, our first Seraphin for the day. And he's gone first land as well. In purple, the 1,000 rated. And then last and not least uh, for team one on the left here is uh, OG Parkway. Um, a 1,400 rated, also going first and our first Cybram. And so all of the factions do feature on team one. But for some reason, we've got a very heavy presence on the old Aeon there. Three out of the six going Aeon. 
All right, let's move from south to north on the other side then as we introduce team two. I uh, just realized the orchestra got a little quiet there. Uh, in the electric color is Blood ASP, another original gangster. This one at 16. You watch Sunset. It's not original gangster and it'll be something completely different. And of course, I'm just digging myself into a deeper and deeper hole. The more and more I continue babbling, I'm not sure <laughs> some of you can sympathize with that at all. Uh, either way, he's Seraphine, uh, 1600, having gone there. Uh, let's have a look. First sand, working on his hydro. Moving over to his north in green is Universal with a V. And um, from the Australian New Zealand clan, he's a thousand rated as Cybron. Also going first sand, hydro, and this very nice little P Gen template. I can only assume Smack Bang Center is going to be an air factory, but he could prove me wrong. But uh, I'm 99%. Uh, sure, and that moving further to his north is yet another guy from down on under is Glow Stick. A 1400 also going as UEF there, also going first land in orange. Crossing the river to the north then, as we get on to the last few players on team two, is Supreme Ned. And this guy, <laughs> maybe at 400 rating, perhaps not quite the Supremo, but maybe he is the Supreme Ned. Either way, that would... Tie in nicely with his name. He's gone Cybron there in yellow starting first. And he's pretty much the forward slot there for Team 2. Moving to his north is the almighty. A 1400 rated there going as Cybron in burgundy red. Hello to you. How's he doing? He's already got his factory online and spitting out something. Having gone first air. And then last but not least in Ferrari red for his team. And indeed the entire match as we start speeding time up is Miseria, a 700 rated UEF player there, also starting first air. And so what I like to see here is despite his low rating, he is not following the oh so always got to be a land factory first meta. And this guy uh, showing that does not have to be the case and showing off for those who maybe aren't aware, those newer to the game, the only land unit that the air factory is capable of producing is what you see rolling off here, the tech one or the tech two or tech three engineers later on in the game and so you are able to you know expand without necessarily requiring land and if we take a little look at the map overall there we see dual gap it is a 20 by 20 and as we can see the 20 uh, from left to right is certainly true but if we look top to bottom i can't even actually scroll uh, let me see if i can cheat there we can i can uh, unlock the units and cheat a little bit so it looks like it's certainly above 10. I'm guessing it's around a 12 kilometer from top to bottom. But either way, uh, the action really is all about the left to right. And yeah, so the dual gaps, very familiar, very popular map. This one, I would say today, is probably played as much as set ons. May even be played once or twice more uh, by the, the time the end of the week rolls around. Although, again, this one did come in. Many years after the set -ons, so I still like to say set -ons is the most popular of all time. But I think if you were to say for the last five years, eh, maybe, maybe Dual, Gla Dual Gap would take that title. We can see All Might here being very greedy, dropping engineers left, right and centre. Does not want his opponents from Team 1 getting the man. <laughs> his, his purpose has been to steal these rocks. 138 apiece. And so that right there was about 270 or so mass just from those two rocks. And let's have a little look actually. How many? Yeah, 275, interestingly enough, not 276. And looks like Green George is saying, oh, <laughs> I thought he was going to race him for that rock. Oh, indeed he is. And so, you know, silver lining there from Green George. He manages to get two of them. And then Almighty says, have some of that. Tech one bomber, that's all you're going to get, that one rock. Almighty, very quick on the expansion. Not perhaps too much of a surprise uh, that Supreme Ned was not so quick off the mark, of course, being a thousand rating points behind. Crayon now moving in with a few engineers of his own. And what's his order of business? Grab himself the rock. And oh, will he get it online or won't he? 
Almighty's moving in. No, he had cancels. And this is going to be a lost cause for sure. Oh, he did. He, he moved to dodge the bomber. Okay. So lost cause either way. Almighty, whether you're talking land sea air, has got it covered. Well, not really the sea, but tell you what, who has? Glow stick. Five minutes has his first frigate on the other side of the map. Uh, well past the 50 way. Beautiful bomb there from Almighty, taking out the production capacity there from Green George, who finds himself up front with a solitary commander as well as his factory. A uh, little further to the north, uh, Snow making a move over here. What are his plans? Well, first off, just to get there. He is ferrying in some units as well on the old transport ship. Five units of production capacity at the Tech 1 stage. But I've got to say, so far, Almighty looking incredibly strong in the middle. Team 2 certainly enjoying the advantages there, both in terms of area that they control as well as the economic benefits that come with it dual gap what we got three we've got another six we've got that makes it 10 so we've got 20 mass points and then these in the middle we've got three here and another four there so we got 27 mass points it would seem in just this particular area here and so zero team's gonna want to relinquish control of that not to mention all the reclaim that we saw there in those rocks yeah, so here, somebody else that's uh, what the hawk says, you know, it's that guy who does these videos online and he and he does like his uh, Tech 1 submarines at the early stage. So they seem to be quite good at dealing with frigates. And so I'm going to go with that. I'm sure what the hawk thought that long before I started making videos. But you can see just how effective that is. And so the frigate there with four kills, bit of build capacity there. From Green George's main base is going to go down. There we go. Speaking of Green George, we find himself surrounded. I was going to say the front line. It's certainly the front line from Team One's point of view, but it's been pushed way back. And yes, this is exactly. Turn your factories on, man! <laughs> don't just don't just build factories and leave them stood idle. Turn them on. Move your commander forward. Keep going for the units until... Ah, oh, there we go. He heard me. Thank you. Thank you. And now just keep going. Keep going. That's it. Don't let the factory go down. No, no, no. Deal with this here. Move your commander. Move your commander to stop the units coming through. Move them this way. Just a little bit loud there. Go on. sees uh, Green George still needs a moment to restore what happened in his base. Just a couple of mass points there and looks like he's now working on those. Fantastic! Okay. The situation has been stabilised. And also looks like uh, Snow starting to establish himself in the mid as well, the Aeon. And so he'll be able to enjoy a little bit of extra range at this stage of the game, certainly versus Demantis. And like that, uh, the Almighty is going to have his work cut out for him now. We do see Super Ned, or Supreme Ned, as I should say, uh, working on something of itself. What's he going here? He's going for the Tech 2 upgrade. Uh, yeah, also, Su Su Supreme Ned, same as before. You've got factories here. Use them. You know, get Mantis out, artillery, even if you're just going to put a couple of engineers and start reclaiming some of these trees. But do something. To build a factory and then not use it is a complete waste of mass, especially in the early game when mass and everything is worth a lot more than it is late game. Rolling around to the ninth minute then, and we'll see just a little look at how the Ecos are going uh, while these front lines conclude with their early engagements we see here snow as well moving forward perhaps a momentary lapse of concentration then superior forces from almighty end up around here allowing an inferior number there from green george to pick up two if not three mass points there that were belonging to almighty three indeed it was so very nice pick up there from green george the 800 rated and is now uh, pumping away at factories down or units rather from his factories and so all things starting to stabilize 
and looking normal yet. So, Ecos overall, let's have a little look then. Whoa, huge disparity. Huge disparity. 391 for Team 2. So, our friends here on the East Coast are well over 100 mass per tick ahead. Uh, team, team 1 now are catching up a little bit, but they're still 100 mass per tick behind. Uh, numbers fluctuating a little bit, but if we take a look at the totals, that's perhaps give us a better idea. It's 155,000 versus 129,000. And so massive, massive advantage for a very early stage in the game uh, to our friends over on the right. That's a, that's a, that's 20%, which is which is just goes to show how effective what Almighty was doing here early on has been. Certainly stealing the ro the rocks and the mass. He's now working again on these central mass points. We see these mass points here should rightfully belong to Green George. He's not reclaimed or rebuilt them. And we, and we see there, that is the difference. That is the difference. This player loses his mass points and inside a minute, they're already rebuilt again. Start to get a little concerned, however, that uh, Team 1, despite being a little behind, are amassing more units in the mid. I'm not sure if Almighty's picked up on that or not. But if we take a little look here, we might as well show off this little you new utility I'm using. The units I've selected here from Almighty are capable of putting out 1,390 damage per second. And if we select here the units belonging, in this case, to Snow, it's 2,700. And so there's already a difference. And then add on to the units here from Green George. It's another 2,000 DPS here. Got a large advantage to the team on the west side. What's this? Oh! Crayon! Parkway! Parkway! Goes for a Corsair Snipe Rush against the strongest player on the other team. And there we see it. No share is off. That means he dies. Everything goes up. These boys are playing for keep. And so what you got there? It's the strongest player on the right-hand team going down very, very early, just 12 minutes in. And so I don't care what advantage Team 2 were enjoying. That has all wiped out. Fantastic play there. Very well done, Parkway. Not sure why I mentioned Crayon's name and all the excitement there. Brilliant. So let's have a little look in chat. Why is give all my <laughs> not even an option I hate the control scheme I truly hate the control scheme in this I think he's referring to the sharing abilities on this game but no share is disabled so I think even if he had tried to give it away it would still not work Almighty moving in with Tech 1 and Tech 2 now. Some Rhinos on the line. But Green Judge with a hell of a lot of build capacity there. You need to get your units inside the shield. Inside the shield. The Mantis has got to go for the shield itself. There we go. Almighty, of course, well aware of this. Just momentarily focusing elsewhere and look at all the point defense here tech 2 commander was able to get these online quite quickly and so what was quite a nice force from almighty certainly for 13 minutes just gets itself far too close to too many shielded up point defense and has been all but wiped out he's gonna hang on to a couple of units and even those are eating fire as they retreat and so, yeah, he's not going to keep anything. They've all been wiped out. And the reinforcing units that were trying to trickle through suddenly decide, no, it's time to go. And once again, the middle mass point's completely wide open. And Green George backs off into the sea, thinks jobs are good. 
has engineers out here working again and crayon again just two 200 or so rate points ahead um sending engineers out here grabbing himself some of the mass you see there george doing the same and it's just sometimes all players would do the same thing given enough time and it very much comes down to the rating as to just how quick and of course the higher the rating they even do stuff preemptively. You know, they know there's a fight taking place or there's a fight going to be taking place. They've already got engineers from the factory on an attack move making their way out before it even kicks off. And, you know, that is really where you're talking the difference between your Joes and your pros. Checking in on the Navy. We've not paid any attention to this, really. And what the Hawk? <laughs> well, he really does like my uh, story about the... Subs here, he's got a string of Tech 1 and Tech 2 subs there belonging to the Aeons, and these are going to have their way versus this Navy here. And we do see torpedo boats, so the perfect counter here. Torpedo boats, but I don't think there's enough there from Glow Stick. Look at them get shredded! And so, yeah, the Cougars do bag themselves a couple or so Tech 1 subs, but you're going to need more than a couple of Cougars when you've got this many subs to deal with. And many of those tech too, of course, these subs are extremely susceptible to torpedo bombers. And so I wouldn't be surprised if somebody over on Team 2 is already getting to work on torpedo bombers. And it looks like what the Hawk, well, is thinking, well, if it's working, why change it? Keep doing it. As he's uh, funneling more and more subs over all the time. Blow stick now with a couple of destroys, but again... Like trickling him in. Oh, he's not got the intel. That's the problem. He is sending a scout over, but yes. A couple of torpedo. Oh, he's not. No, sorry. They're not just trying. They're just more, more cougars. You just need the numbers, man. Get a sonar. There is one. He's updating it. Okay, there we go. That's more like it. They're not Cybrans. You'll be able to see them. Keep your boats together. Don't present a flank to a superior. Just keep them together. You see, these torpedo boats are able to enact a lot of damage despite being outnumbered more than 10 to 1. But, you know, you need them. You need a few more together. Blow Stick wisely bails out of the drink there. These uh, torpedoes would be able to tear him a new one in no time, should they wish. And with that, his entire base would go up. Finally! Universal says, you know, we need to send these torpedo bombers in he's got two of them overhead and now we're starting to see the weakness here of what the hawks incredibly effective navy torpedo bombers beginning to tear these subs up he does however pick off the all-important hq there belonging to glow stick and so that was crucial i think more dropping in all the time Glow stick keep fancying uh, to get his foot wet, but then thinks, no, there's still too many for my liking. But they're trickling away awful quick now. Miseria deciding to trickle a few top bombers in of his own. And suddenly that force there from what the Hawk is dealt with. And Hawk's uh, reinforcing subs there also pulling back. And so, yeah, fantastic pickup. I think that there from what the Hawk was very effective indeed. Could have maybe pulled out a little sooner, saved his, uh, saved himself a few more subs. But either way, I think it was a comprehensive victory for him. Despite what he lost, he was able to kill an awful lot of the enemy boats and set them back quite a ways. Also forcing him to build a lot of torpedo launchers back in the main base. Almighty got him sent a brick up on the line. All the Aurora's taking a particular dislike to the Brick. Brick close to a rank of Vet, but it's not enough. The Aurora's pick off the Brick. There was about 15 of them going for him. Together with the artillery here. This is a very nice pickup here from Snow. And suddenly, all of these factories from Almighty find themselves surrounded. He's got engineers. The only thing he's trying to do is reclaim what he can from this. And I think that's the only thing that you can do. Almighty trying to preserve a couple of units there. Moving them out of harm's way. Perhaps hoping to pick off a few engineers that may come through later. If Snow doesn't make a move for it. Oh! 
Oh, what's this? Parkway thinking outside the box a second time. Trying to build a sneaky base over here. Not sure if he was going for... Well, it looks like artillery pieces. Either way, they've been picked up. Perhaps a bit of a clue was when the shield started flickering. Or, you know, when you see these big explosions or plasma incursions. And Miseria, the 700, very fast off the block, is the one sent to deal with it. He's taken out all the construction engineers. He's de dealt with the shields. The rest of this is just a formality cleanup operation. Um, you're just going to hope that these artillery pieces don't manage to destroy too much of the structures down here. Um, but it's possible that they may. Yeah, so this is going to require dealing with um, perhaps one TML. Oh, no, he's got a tap missile defense here as partway. He's not daft. He's certainly not daft. One more ASF now over here. We've got numerous players from the team dealing with. Let's have a little look what we got. So Almighty has himself nine. I've seen Miseria going for ASF as well. He's got five. And was there anybody else? No. no. But Universal V is, however, T2. We saw him use the torpedo bombers earlier. And now the Cooper up front. I was calling it Cougar. Cougar. It's a Cooper. There's a unit called the Cougar. I've forgotten what on earth it could possibly be. Look at this. Green George. Emboldened by the attack from his pal up north. Is pushing through. And suddenly all the advantages enjoyed by Team 2. Find himself getting wiped out. The only thing I'd like to see in this army here from Green George is a shield. A shield. The Mongoose, they're great at damage, but they're so weak. Look how quick they died just to a couple of Tech 2 Cerberus turrets. A shield in that complementary mix would have found itself being a bit of a Morse... <laughs> Morse? Force multiplier. Yeah, here we can see how effective these artillery pieces have been. Look how many mass points they've picked up. These are all Tech 2 caps off. And they were under the cover of about four shields. <laughs> Go for the flak first, man. The flak. There we go. That's the ticket. Broadswords moving in and all. Miseria to the rescue. Finish that one off. There we go. There's the second. Now he can do the artillery. Go do the artillery. Tap missile defense. No real threat. Nice cruiser out there from Glow Stick. Bags itself some of the enemy aircraft that were flying over. Together with the numbers there from the almighty. Silver lining, however, moving in. A monkey lord. Team 2 needed something. They had that huge advantage and Team 1 just wiped it away in the last five minutes or so. But this could change everything. Green George already knows he's running. Snow doesn't. Let's just have a little look out the interest here on the stats. DPS, 4,580. So that's a huge amount of damage. Of course, the main cannon there of the Monkey Lord, together with the little rockets or the mini cannons that fire off the side, the very long-range weapons here. These, I prefer the long-range rockets. I know I've said it before. And the first nuke, that is a fast nuke. 23 minutes... And it's shot down. 23 minutes, 15 seconds. No cheats, no crazy stuff. A nuke fired across a map and intercepted. Monkey Lord finds itself walking headlong into a firebase from Green George. But he's not got enough point defense, I don't think. Although, for some reason, Almighty does back off. Perhaps it's all the reinforcing units together with the remaining point defense there. And provide... Does he have intel? No! Terrible, terrible. He needs intel so that the monkey lord can keep firing. Monkey can't fire at what it can't see. There we go. Air coming over from Almighty. 
What is happening? <laughs> it's, it's got, this is the first time I've seen monkeys chase a uh, monkey lord down and a monkey run away. Almighty says, yeah, what am I doing? Turn around. Have some of that. Do you like the taste of laser beams? And they're just showing how weak the monkeys are. Tech 2 unit there from the UEF. Not really what you want to use versus a monkey lord. But I think in cahoots with what was there, it might just have been enough. 143 kills and the monkey lord close to its second star of vets. About 80% of on the way there. Showing off that his missiles can be used against Tech 1 Air as well. And yeah, look at these. Just the long range. I don't know if they are rockets or... Certainly the missiles versus the air, but there's something else here as well. So the Monkey Lord's got three different weapons. I never knew. I always thought it had two, but no, it's got three. And there we see them all being used at the same time. And so 25 minutes in, we'll have another quick look at the scores. Now, 1 million for Team 2 and 990,000 for Team 1. And so Team 2 are about 1%. Now, what's that? 2%, 3%. Make your mind up, 2 or 3% depends how early on in the tick you're looking. But yeah, still a minor advantage for Team 2 then, despite all the shenanigans down here. But certainly nothing like the 20% that they were enjoying before. Monkey Lord there, responsible for some of this. A lot of damage, some of the mass points there we've seen taken out. Monkey Lord still making good progress. Just want to check anywhere else. Again, I do like this, you know, but this here, the spaced out energy storage. I mean, energy storage useful anyway, more and more than it ever was. But by spacing it out, you know, you're sort of preventing the opposing side from sneaking a base in down here because, well, they'd have to kill your thing and then you'd know and you'd see it. Monkey Lord continuing to make waves. But Glow Stick having been allowed to re-establish. <laughs> but cruisers are so weak and so susceptible versus the subs. These are all tech two. A handful of subs there belonging to Supreme Ned roll forward. I'm surprised that one of them even was able to live long enough to get through to the other side. We see a battleship over here from What The Hawk as well. The Aeon Tech 3. Got a couple of Neptunes over here belonging to the UEF. Glow sticks controlling those. Very, very good versus surface ship. But no, this is all cruisers and battle cruisers. Oh! If ever there was a rock, paper, scissors situation... What the Hawks just rolling in with scissors and the only tool that glow sticks got are rocks. <laughs> that was horrific, man. I think uh, I think glow stick was very lucky that Hawk decided to back off a little bit. Check in on the old monkey lord. How are they doing? We've got a big scouting run there. We've got a parkway already working on a laser over here. We see a notification for somebody else working on a... What we got here? Teleport on Universal V. What? Where is he? There he is. This guy, Tech 3, mazered up. Teleporter, 28 minutes. That is unusually fast. You know, trying to set yourself up for telemazer defense and have nuke defense and one in the clip and tech up and still fight in the mid. All inside 28 minutes. Very difficult to do. Are you going to use... Oh, he's charging. He's charging. We're going to have to stick with him so I can very quickly jump with him. Once in a while, I'll be lucky and catch something. All right, there he is. Oh, he's going straight for the enemy commander. Bookstar 88 is on the menu. And he's just found himself microwaved. 
box start going down just inside the 29th minute. Beautiful pickup. Parkway says I warned them twice. No one else saying, yeah, you needed a tap missile as I tell you, Mesa defense. So, a few shields and a few point defense. And so, with it, Buck Star and what was his base disappears. Second nuke out now from Team One. Is this one going to fare any better? Beautiful work here. I'm surprised Glowstick at 1400 didn't get himself. You know, having seen what was already the problem, a few more boats on the line. <laughs> no! No, he brings boats back. Very nice pickup. I think, you know, I think he was lucky to only lose these two. Very lucky. I think it was very lucky this one survived. Once again, the subs find themselves susceptible to the air. And glow stick for all the stick I've given him for going too heavy on cruisers. Is throwing out torpedo bombers to deal with this. He's got a few torpedo boats, but they're not really any good when you've got a battleship bearing, bearing down on them. Although for now, the battleship's attention is versus the forward structures here. Along into Supreme Ned in the mid. He's throwing forwards a few loyalists versus this <laughs> static base here. That's looking increasingly strong. Green Judge decided not to give up on it. And is now with a bunch of purses as well there. And so this right here, short of eating a new, is an incredibly strong forward operating base for Team 1. And it's right in the middle of the map. More and more air here all the time from Team 2. They've got Miseria with a bunch of ASL. I'll tell you what, for a 700 rated, this guy is up on his air skills. Torpedo Bombers, he realises that's the weak spot of this Navy. He's got ASF screening. And I just wish here that what the Hawk would, would recognise that, that staying here eating all this fire is not good. Back off a little bit. String a few more cruisers forward. We see one here. This is a nice position. Picking off all the torpedo bombers as they turn around on their initial run. He's stringing in another one. Okay, what the hawk? He knows what he's doing. This is the monkey lord. It is. It's still the monkey lord from before. Almighty has not thrown it away. Now with 240 kills, the other team have any idea it's there. Well, on and off, if they're paying attention. Almighty is screening it with ASF. Yeah, so there's the big clue for Team 1. You've got a Monkey Lord bearing down on your position. I do feel... I mean, maybe... Oh, it's so obvious it's not worth pointing out. Even so, point it out. You know, somebody could be really busy doing something, microing something, whatever... Just put a ping down or let them know, you know, Monkey Lord. Do you see a few pings over here? Multicolor pings. Someone's figured out you press F5, F6, F7, you get different colored pings. More and more pings still. So there we go. So Team One's certainly letting one another know you've got a situation. towards uh, 33 minutes now and I don't think we're going to miss too much else if we focus in on what exactly is going to happen here. I mean, what are you doing? <laughs> Parkway. This is what I mean. This guy clearly attention elsewhere. He's working on mass points right in front of a monkey lord. Got a few support commanders here from Crayons. That's it. Point defense. Good. Not necessarily the best at Cybern, but if the only tool you've got is an ammo. What's going on over here? Sam Sites. Oh, finally, he's working on Ravagers. Here we go. Green George, who was going proper SimCity 2000. <laughs> Look at this. I don't think I've ever seen so many kennels in one place. Drone stations at the same time. Assuming he's got the eco 
well no he's well he's spending every ounce he has on ravagers he almighty's his monkey lord realizes it backs off from the ravagers goes for the lower damage cerberus turrets there picks off oh snow's commanders here sometimes the screen mute jumps over oh that was so close less than 2,000 hit points remain i reckon snow's thinking about an overcharge but he can't come out when there's a monkey right there oh strategic bombs now as well from parkway snow just 2,000 it's a five star vetted up monkey now 279 kills and it goes under the water. I don't forget this sucker. It's got torpedo launchers as well. Snow, 1800. 17, 16. Somebody. Parkway, give him, give him a Tech 2 transport. George, torpedo launchers. Here we go. Crayon, the only one who's really up on this. Suddenly spamming the Tech 2 torpedo launchers here. Got also Scathis under construction from Crayons. Snow! 7,600! Almighty, but just, just trample him. 500. Subs out desperately. 400. The Monkey Lord hits 12,300. Snow, what are you doing? Run! 200. Well, 40 hit points. Monkey Lord, 5,000. But on its last volley of. Oh, it goes down like two seconds later. Oh my goodness, Snow. Oh. How many of you watching that were willing him to move? I'm sure if this video gets a couple of thousand views or more, our collective willpower for Snow to move might just alter the course of history. We'll have to see. Oh, what's this? Shrap bomb rush. 35. How many we got yet? Bark, wait. Well, some of them have been shot down, but there's 11. They're going for the main base there, belonging to Universal, the air grid. I'm surprised. What? Universal with five. I'm sure half of those didn't drop. Luckily for Universal, he has one shield left online. He doubles back towards it, and it's a big shield as well. Cybern or no, and they eat all of those bombs. That would have been good night for him. Miseria gets his ASF over, and with that, the end of it. Scathis from Universal, halfway online. And so that was a very, very important save. And again, just shows just having one shield in the right place at the right time to back off to can make all the difference. We're also seeing the static artillery out now. The Duke there from Glowstick just come online, got itself two kills so far. And it looks like it's punched through the air grid here or the shielding. Perhaps there isn't. No, this is the Eye of... I almost want to call it the Eye of Rihanna. Well, I guess it is. Strategic launch detected. Like diamonds in the sky. Not that Rihanna. Miseria. Jeez, man. This guy's just everywhere. Look at the broadswords here. What's he got? 26. Look at the DPS. These suckers can put out 6,800. That's more DPS than a monkey lord. And look at them versus versus. Green George. No, 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 no. They're going to die anyway. No. Use them or get them in the water or, or try and do something. But trying to back off from a huge wave of... No. That hurts. That hurts. Another nuke. Is that impacting? Indeed it is. Green George asking for air. Yes, ask for air. You should have done that right at the start. Put pings down. That's assuming, of course, anybody on his team has any. And they do. Parkway moving in. Okay, finally. But how many Percy's had to die? Let's have another little count. On DPS, 6. Look at the DPS just drop off 19. I didn't actually count, did I? I was counting everything, but... That was so many purses, man. That was several experimentals worth of purses. Which is why I'm surprised, despite the broadswords, he didn't continue to push. Because broadswords are... I mean, look how long it's taking him to get from there to there, and he's still got half. He'd have still had half if he went from there to there. And the damage would have been... Well, it would have been horrific. Speaking of... 
Oh, <laughs> Parkway, man. Oh, again, if if he if he's not realising and you realise the team's better... Oh, there he is. First order going up now. He's going to have to get those drone kennels on that shield right quick. Oh, go on. The shield! Go for the shield. Support commander's going up. what though despite all of that what the hawks navy looking increasingly dangerous how many experimentals has he got up front sorry battleships 10 of them miseria is trying to disseminate them but with this many cruisers in back misery i think would be better off going for the cruisers first then the battleships or just backing off entirely this is a terrible place for team two to park their air what the hawks learned from his lesson He's got 17 cruisers out up front. Or 16 and one reinforcing. This! There we go. Miseria does eventually back off. Save what is left. Let's have a little look. How's the old Scath is doing over here? Well, Crayons is, is about halfway. And what about the one belonging to Universal? Well, that's about uh, three quarters. 80%. Second Duke online here on Glowstick's main base. The first one now is 72 kills. The second one is just starting. And Parkway... It looks like they've, re they've retargeted for Crayons' main base. Having found itself without shielding. I'm really interested in what's going to happen over here now. Surely... Let's have a little look. Their objective has got to be... Yeah, they know that they... Uh, Surely this here has got to be Numero Una. Let's just have a look how many we got left. Nine battleships. They're able to put out 4,700 damage per second. Was it damage? I think it's damage per second. Damage per shot. It's, uh, of course, something slightly different. Oh, it's close. Shield blinks on in the nick of time. Get your send more shields, glow stick. Like... Get yeah, these guys working on more shields. Oh, the forward duke goes down there. That was important for team one. That duke had caused them a lot of damage. I've seen everything getting shent. Oh, <laughs> shent. Oh, I'm getting all excited now. Everything's getting sent forward from both of these teams. But I'm just starting to get the feeling that what the Hawk has got numbers on this. Who's firing the nuke? Nuke out from Miseria. That nuke lands here. That could... Oh, it's going somewhere completely different. Man, that could have been the defensive nuke of the century. I reckon that's what Hawk was expecting. Look at his navy, the way he split the navy up. A huge number of harm systems here belonging to Supreme Ned. That, those harm systems, I think, are the only thing that's stopping here complete domination from what the hawk and there we see that nuke impact that very strong forward looking base there belonging to green george it's at about 10 minutes ago it, it looked incredible the only thing that could have dealt with it i think was the nuke and indeed that's what went in scathis from universal v online and there lands the first lot of droplets did they get a kill they somehow missed everything so the first round not getting a single kill just curious actually Deep, yeah, only 1,006. I say only. That must be per... Of course, it takes forever to reload, so... In come the second lot. It's certainly good at cracking through shields. What's uh, this? What's Parkway doing? Parkway's jumping around now. Oh, he's, uh, he's been able to... I say destroy something. I'm not so sure. Parkway jumps back towards his base just in time to witness all the Scathis fire landing from above. Oh no, Scathis' main base. How is this game going to be an epic? Parkway charging up again. What's he going to do this time? Let's have a little look. Where's he going? Anything on the menu if I press... Oh, there, there we go. Um, I don't know, mate. Oh, I can see it. Right into the back of Miseria's main base. Right next to Miseria. 
Why? Why did the laser not hit him? The laser didn't hit. <laughs> what? But well, talk about wonky cyber technology. I think Miseria, very lucky to have survived that one. And the player that Team One can ill afford to lose goes down. Minute 43. But suddenly that's a five versus three situation. And Team Two looking comfortably in control now with the exception of this Navy. Come on, what the hawk. Feels like what the hawk's holding all the cards here. So Team Two, if there's a player they need to kill right now, it's white. What the hawk. The Hawk is continuing to apply pressure up front. Supreme Ned, i got to say it, Supreme Ned, your uh, harm systems is what kept that overrun alive. Yes, Almighty has since picked up on that and is rushing more out himself all the time. Hugely important. Almighty is going to lose this nice monkey here that was dealing with some of these naval units at range but the Scathis fire continues to rain in what happened to the Scathis from the other team well there it is it's not yet finished but it's underwater that's a good place to build it we've got a maver up here from green george it's not yet finished it's under construction it's surrounded by a lot of shields and that it needs to be because there's a lot of Scathis fire raining in in comes another new forward bases there from green george that's more of an economic kill than it is anything else. And the Scath is now taking a dislike to Green George's main base. He's got so many drone stations there. Get him working on a shield, for goodness sake, man. Get him working on something. Scath is fire continues to rain in. Oh, oh, no. No, Green... Oh, I'm sure some of you felt just this here has been such that was such a that base could have potentially knocked out anything in five seconds assuming he had the eco to do it but it looks like all his uh, drones are over here i'll tell you what put your drones on trying to keep the shields alive more long-range artillery raiding in what's happening over here navy continues to try to push but with this many arms I mean, this, at least it is getting, it got the second Duke at some point. We've seen their support commanders as well getting taken out. But the Scathis, the action really seems to be here. The Maver, who's going to get it? And what's actually happening to the Scathis down here? Well, it's not yet ready, but it's very close. Look at it. 8,000 and plus hit points out of the nine it needs. More shields going up. Look, there's two different groups of commanders here. One of you, shield it, put point defense, put SAM sites. The other one, work on the Maver. Shield's just about holding. Let's check elsewhere. Well, the Navy's getting pushed back here. I, I have to say, I can't see how this is going to go on for another, you know, 15, 20 minutes. Oh, they break through. The Maver breaks through. Somehow. Sorry, the, the Scathis breaks through, but somehow the Maver survives. Despite all of that, almost all the shields are gone. Two of them remain online. They blink back on in the nick of time. Thankfully, though. Most, if not all, of the support commanders remains there. And the Scathis, it's got nothing else on the menu. This is target numero uno. Scout plane over there from Almighty. Ping goes down. Solitary gunships over here. We've got experimentals as well moving across from the Almighty. But somehow, despite all of this, what the hawk is continuously able to fund more and more naval units. Massive credit here to what the Hawk, the 1100 Aeon, despite all of this going around, is still the only one, is the only one putting any pressure at all on the opposite number right now. And now another new cow.
Where's this one heading? I do like the little SAM site wall here that Green George has been able to put on. And that's going to turn a lot of that air from misery, if not all of it, into mincemeat. Where's the nuke? There it goes. Is it going to impact? It's going in. What the Hawks main base? <laughs> What's this? Somebody's teleporting in. The Maver comes online. It's starting to get itself excited. And Crayon. Is it Crayon? No, it's the Almighty. Oh my goodness. The Maver doesn't even get halfway beyond a semi. And is picked up by the Almighty. The Almighty then gets picked up by all the support commanders. Is losing a player and all their stuff worth the exchange for a Maver? I don't know. He didn't get anything else. We see there the Almighty's base pops up. And so, and, oh, it's the Almighty, of course, that had all these forward operating harm systems. And so this opens up the Navy a little bit for what the Hawk. And so I think overall, despite losing the Maver, that may have been a slight advantage for Team 1. They needed something. I mean, look at it. Thank goodness for mobile economy, right? And they don't give it up. All right, I'll start again from scratch. What's happening to the sca Oh! Scathis from Crayon is online, makes itself landfall, hides under a bunch of Seraphim shields. Go on then. There we go. I'm sure they used to make a noise. Do, 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 or something like that. Perhaps it was because I had my camera off the edge of the map. I don't know. But look at this. Scafish shells passing one another through the sky. And suddenly, this game is not quite as said and done as it once was. In come the first lot of Scafish rounds. Oh, and Supreme Ned. Who must have had a Scafish or almost had a Scafish of his own. Either that or it was belonging to the Almighty. Battleships here and naval vessels from What the Hawk pushing forwards. It's got all of these torpedo launchers. Scaffis fire causing a lot of damage here. What's <laughs> it? A handful of broadswords making them way to the shields. I think they've got an inside of some of them. Scaffis here with 31 kills from Crayon. Makes a little move for the water, then comes back. Of course, Seraphim shields. The only shields that you're going to want to have covering your base if a Scathis fire is making its way. And I'm going to do something that I very rarely do, and that is split the screen, because it really does feel like what's happening with this Scathis and the place where it goes. Of course, I find myself with a mini-map in the way, but let's put it down there for now. See, the scaff is here belonging to Universal. The Navy as well. Certainly what the Hawk's got that. Oh, he's got some right in the back. Miseria, though, with a whole bunch of broadswords, is going to be able to deal with that. The question is, is he, is he going to get even anything done with the battleship? No. Oh, but there was something that was done. Miseria. I'm not sure if he really was killed by suicide or if he happened to eat the round off this Scathis. I think there's perhaps the answer. I think it was Scathis fire. Miseria. And of course, he was the guy dealing with the broadswords. Let's go back to single screen. Put the map back where it belongs. And the Scathis fire continues passing one another. But look at the bases, what's happened to them? The middle of the map, there's no... Oh, forgive me. There is one unit in the entire middle section of the map. We've got Navy here belonging to our White the Hawk. We've got a couple of Megaliths down here from the other team. Universal making their way over. But now there's almost nothing to stop this. The 400! The 400 rated player is the only one 
trying to deal with Navy at this point. He's trying to get more arms online. He's got three over here. He needs more. He's working on it. He's got support commanders, but he's got almost nothing left. Look at this. Nothing. Scathis for Team 1. 123 kills. Oh! Starting to break through. Scathis for Team 2. 269 shields. More shields all the time there. Supreme Ned. Nah, I think he thinks I've got an out left. I can't continue. I don't think we can blame him for 400 having lost his base this late in the game. So we roll around to minute 54. Another nuke out again from Team 1. Let's take a little look at the Ecos. I don't believe this. It's a, it's a 3 versus 2. Just 5 players remaining. Less than half from the 12. What's going on over here? Universal teleports over. Gets himself stealth and then a perimeter monitoring station. That's a nice unit to build. I assume the other guys haven't a clue. Well, if they have, they certainly didn't ping it. Very important strategic missile defense there. With a new just a new defense just done. The second one halfway done. It's now empty. Works on a shield. And so White the Hawk once again saving the day for his team. Bunch of Scathis fire lands. Oh, oh. Damages the missile defense, but doesn't take it out. What the Hawk takes a bit of damage as well, but doesn't go down. Get yourself shields. That new defense is what's saving you right now. And Scathis fire once again, passing one another in the sky. This one over here now for Team 1. 169 kills. And the other Scathis, 308. But what the Hawk? Well, there's nothing left. There is nothing left Navy-wise at all for Team 2. What the Hawk? Minute 55 is reaching the very back. Scaffis Fire continue reigns in there from Team 1. And Team 2 have got almost nothing left. Almost nothing. Glow Stick on paper still exists. He's got a couple of mass points. And that is it. i got to think he's stopped playing at this point. I think Glow Sticks sees the writing on the wall. And so it's Universal. It does have a cheeky little base over here. He's building himself an Omni Sensor. So Universal's going to have a little idea of what's going on. And he's got Megalifts. The Almighty's giving him advice. Speaking from beyond the grave. Team 2 do break through these shields here. But Scathis, very importantly from Crayons, kept alive. He's bringing it through the channel. We've got strategic bombers here as well from Universal. It's absolutely crucial he doesn't get spotted. But with these two... Sorry, it's uh, one monkey, one megalith. This is a nice combination here. What's happening on the other side? I think it's time for the old split screen again. I'm going to have to do this the opposite way just because of the mini-maps. So it really feels like... It's going to be the easiest way to do it. There we go. So the left half of your screen is what's happening on the right side and vice versa. Perhaps that's a reason to switch the scores over at some stage. I don't know. A fantastic play here. What the Hawk? We see strategic bombers now moving in from Universal. What are they going for? They must be waiting for the Scathis. They must be waiting for the Scathis. They're making a move. Oh, they're going to go for the Naval Yard. Oh no, <laughs> look at that turn. Crayons, as if Crystal Ball does a 180 on the Scathis just as the exper just as the strategic bombers were about to drop their payloads. Universal V spotted, swings them around, goes for something else. Look at these battleships. Bring more battleships in. Bring it, bring everything right up as far as you can get it, man. What the hook? Pack this coastline. Scathis moved behind. More and more shields. We've got so many... So many support commanders here. Let's take a little look at the eco universe. Well, he's got plenty. He can't spend it. We've got the experimentals here. Monkey Lord going through the water there. What the Hawk? Very quick to respond to that. Trying to deal with it. Bringing subs back. We've got subs here. It's going to be close. Spiderbot half damaged. We've also got the Megalith over here that so far I don't think it knows what it's doing. Monkey Lord does make landfall. 
And the Navy over here is gathering more and more. Scathis fire continues to rain. 337. 56 kills. It's a four star. Well, Sub's not really very good at it now. But he <laughs> missile fire from the torrent class. Low stick taken out by What the Hawk. Seen him standing there for a little while. I think that's going to impact the game too much. And so Universal V finds himself alone versus three players. He marks the Monkey Lord right through. Is it going to get anything else? It's going to be very close. He does get a support commander. He's going for mass points. And with it, I think it's down. How's the Scathis? Well, the Scathis has gotten out of the water into another shield base. We've got the Maver now back online from Green Charge. Huge props. How on earth did you build a second one with almost no base? And so really, it's this guy versus these guys. Team 1, Team 2. And just to confuse everybody, Team 2 is the uh, team here on the left. Team 1 on the right. We've got a nuke out. I'm, I'm, this is getting too complicated even for me. A massive nuke! What the heck? A new impact. Was that both? Did he get both? 59 minutes. What's happened? Yeah, I think he got both. I think he got both. Oh my goodness. Universal V just picked up both of the experimental artillery pieces. Oh, but the Scathis fire is still impacting. Is there anything else? Scathis there belonging to Universal V is a little damaged, but not too bad. I guess he's just moving it further and further away from the coastline. He's using his support commanders to get more and more tap missile defense, but you're going to need rows and rows of shields, point for anything. You've still got three enemy commanders to deal with. Granted, none of them, none of them being Cybran. The only Cybran on the field right now is Universal V himself. In fact, we've got one player representing every faction right now. That's all that's left. One apiece. And Universal V has not been spotted. Still. What's his uh, sit rep? Well. It's got Megalith here. I'm surprised he didn't go for the base here belonging to Crayons. If nothing else, it's, uh, it's a point of economy. It's shields. There's an air factory. Granted, it's only tech one, but it can put out build capacity. It can help re-establish. So, now the scath is fire now from Universal V. Still rains down. And that, I think, if it worked for that scath is, Universal V would be lobbing in the towel right now. So this is close. I wonder what is the minimum range on this thing? I, uh, all right, so if he moved it over here, I think there's a possibility he could target the enemy navy. He would have to move it, though, and it wouldn't be able to fire for that duration. Perhaps he's more interested in going for the enemy base. He fires out a new. I think we can afford to just increase time by a fraction. He is now making a move for this base. Megalith then finds itself picked up by a battleship from What the Hawk who has re-established just the very basics over here. He's upgrading his factory, using support commanders. Having, of course, lost him. Another new cow! Oh, it's going to be close. And he gets crayons! Universal! Bags himself on the 62nd minute. Makes it a two versus one. Still in favour of team one, but I have to say, there's not much left. Do leave a like if you're enjoying this one so far, ladies and gentlemen. It's a fantastic game. As we say, just once in a very, very blue moon, the planets do align and we can get a cracker, even on dual gap adaptive. I'm starting to feel that there's very little that Team 1 can do. What's that George doing there? Tech 3 shields. He's got the... Uh, the old eco upgrades, the RAS preset on his commander. He's got all these SAM sites that he's got. He is working on Tech 3 mass points with his support commander. Um, and he has a quantum gateway. 
So it's not completely out the game, but it's just very, very difficult to establish a main base when you've got a Scathis. The Scathis just can continue. And there we see the Scathis now used self-defensive. Let's see how it deals with these naval vessels. Well, that's a lot of damage. So the, the two that hit took a lot of hit points off that vessel. He's moving it forwards. Could this be a mistake? But what the Hawk picks up on. I realise I always root for the underdog. And in this case, you'd have to say, well, it's universal. He's a 2v1. He was 3v1. I don't think so. The underdog is very clearly the other team right now. At the scaff is used defensively again. Masterful work with these support commanders here, Universal. Fantastic play. Oh. But he's got them all right up at the front. Oh, he's breaking through. What the hook is broken through. Support commander's going critical. He's now going right for the new launcher. Another one goes up. Oh, the new launch is half damaged. Oh, it's halfway. Oh, it's close. It's, oh, that was so close, man. There's a lot of the construction capacity there. Belonging to Universal V going up. As you see, Scathis is killing more and more of these ships, including the Torrent class back there. Oh, all the shields collapse. Universal V, he loses his new launcher and a bunch of support commanders. What's the situation now on this guy? Oh, his power's right in the balance. No. He was trying to pull something off. Almighty oh, says Scathis here. That wouldn't be a bad idea targeting one of the two players directly on the opposing team. Let's have a little look. What can their team see? Well, there you see it. Universal V, but he's run out of energy. Commander under attack. Oh, it's Commander. Where is it? Where is it? Oh. He telemazes in going for Green George. But Green George succumbs. Of course, the UEF, no laser. No maser. See Universal V also gathering himself some torpedo bombers. And with it, I don't believe this, it's a one versus one. It's not the first time this week we've had a full team of players dwindle on down to a one versus one situation. Universal V finds himself picked up by a battleship. So he can't stand still with a battleship firing on him. He's got to keep moving. Now move and then get out of the way. But does, does what the Hawk have anything to deal with a commander on land? I don't think he does. He does have a GC though. He has a GC. Oh. Let's speed up time a little bit more. Oh, he got the G. Apologies for missing this. What the hawk? Jesus, what the hawk, man. Apologies for the cursing there, but... Just what the F? He's managed to get a GC. He's taken out the Scathis. And so suddenly, how many times has the advantage on this team changed? I don't know. Too many to count. He's now working on torpedo bombers to go after the Navy. But I don't think he's got anything like enough. Suddenly... We do still have a bunch of support commanders here from Universal V. Of course, Universal still telemazering around. He did get himself the uh, ion reactor. Let's have a look. What's the eco now? Speaking of which, let's just have a look at the ecos overall. What are we down to? 155 versus 111. So no more. We're talking thousands and thousands. Those days are long gone. We're talking less than 250. Or just about 250 between them right now. Both sides still trying to get stuff online. Of course, I'd say a minor advantage to what the Hawk, because he's got so many support commanders in the water, and that's where a lot of the mass is currently found. Whoa, look at the pause there. Let's have a little look. Oh, <laughs> I ain't going to try and count that. Not even going to try. Tech 3 spy plane from Universal V. I just wonder, do these guys know where each other is? So many uh, pings there. So much chat. Everybody is still rooting. Everybody who's passed is still rooting for their guy. Of course, they don't get global view, so they can still only see what their team can see. 
What the hawk picks up on something there belonging to the enemy. The question is, is it in range? I would suspect so. It can hit from here, says Crayons. Indeed it can. And so this naval yard here, it's tech two. Oh, that's not going to last yet. So Universal V needs to reconstruct that somewhere, perhaps here. More torpedo bombers out there from Universal V going after undefended, unescorted battleships. Ah. Oh. Get yourself, get the, get the cruiser over here. Although, what the hawk now with a donut? Oh, donut. Does he have any idea still? No, no idea. No idea. He's building. Yes, he's using the megalift to build the megalift. Guys, how rare do you see people use this little, I want to call it a nutsack, but of course it's anything but a nutsack. It is, it is a, a female egg laying device, the megalift. I don't know if I'd call the megalift quite female, but in any case, Donut doesn't like megalith. Have some of that. Fry, fry. And the megalith is down. And the, the few engineers that were online are not going to be enough to get a SAM site up in anything like the quantity required to deal with Donut. One minute, one hour, 13 minutes, 45 seconds. I have no idea who wins this. This is one of these nail-biting, exciting... This is what's... This is like the best of the best of Supreme Commander Forge lines. Do ensure, if you are enjoying it, that you do leave a like. Because aside from just letting these guys know you've done all right, it will help other people find the video as well. And I think something like this is worth its weight in gold. I'm so glad to have found this replay was shared in the discord i really should have written the name down of who it was there's so many replays in there and a lot of them are just well somebody's posting it because they won on a team and they just want to show that they won and they're not always unfortunately the best but this wow books that trend right good and proper him he's using he's using his donut to scout the map that is the stage of what things have come to We've got an expert. The only aircraft I have is a donut, and I'm having to use it to scout on a 20 by 20. It's got a GC over here. That'll help either plug the gap or at least prevent the other guy. He's still producing air over here. Just wondering, though, at some point. Where is this commander? What the hawk? Right in the middle. Commander right there. I'm just wondering, did Universal pick that up? Yes, he did! So Universal is the first guy, as best I can tell, to get positive ID on the enemy commander. And he's now getting to work over here on the old harms system. Again, I don't think harms too much the problem. I mean, useful. It's this donut. Assuming, of course, the donut can't see. Oh, it can see the harm. So it could ground fire. Oh. Oh. Oh, 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 what the hawk? Universal knows it's coming. He's gone to the other side of the map, but he's been picked up. Ladies and gentlemen. Oh, he jumps again. He recognizes the emergency. Yes, but it's going to cost him a lot of energy, and he's running out of the ability to keep doing so. Oh, what the hawk? He's got scouts. He's got another experimental. He's got two, I think, now. Indeed, he does. GC over here. And I'm just wondering, is Universal left with any economic structures after that? But he's still 7,000. Oh, he's moved right next to the enemy commander. Build! Oh, this is, this is so close. Just build. Build torpedo launchers, man. It's a race. Oh, no, but what the Hawks got himself? The Navy. And I think this is going to be it. Ladies and gentlemen, another commander succumbs deep under the pond. And what the hawk wins? What the hawk, man? It's not just that you win, and it's not just an incredible what the kind of a name. But you was no doubt about it at 1100. Man of the match. Even 20, 30 minutes ago, you were the man of the match. Ladies and gentlemen, I think you're going to find that one difficult to agree. I very much hope you enjoyed that.
there is a name change coming to the channel in the coming days so if you log in one day find some sort of a weird oh what the hell is this i didn't subscribe to british strategy or tactical brit or northern uh, Stra i don't know it's going to be something like that if you find one of those sort of names it is me do dial in same content as ever and until next time wherever the world you may be good morning good afternoon good evening and good night take care bye bye